Hello YouTube, in this video we're going to be talking about zoomers. This is not the first time I record this video. Actually, uh, it should have came out 24 hours ago because I started this segment thinking it was going to be a big joke. I just scribbled some notes and some thoughts I had on zoomers and I just thought it was going to be a rant and a roast and it was going to be mainly a funny video. But the more I spoke, the more I realized that I cared about this much more than I thought because I ended up ranting for an hour and 40 minutes and this is when it clicked. This topic is not going to be funny. It's going to be a rant but the stuff I have to share is some real shit because I believe that Zoomers are the sacrifice generation. They are the generation that marks pretty much an end of a cycle and talking about it for a while made me realize why and how. So instead of making a big joke and farce out of this, I instead want to present something pretty serious that is going to be a form of diagnosis, since I believe that I know now why Zoomers are the way they are, since I believe them to be the worst generation, even worse than Boomers, even worse than Millennials, but not for the reasons you think. I think this is the first generation that is going to, to uh, kill itself on a symbolical level. Whereas previous generations constantly either kill the environment around them or the future or a mixture of the both, like, like uh, boomers, for example. Even just now starting to talk, I can actually start to feel my thoughts melting and mixing because I have so much to say about the topic. But I don't want this video to, video to be a repeat of yesterday because it was too much rambling. Even for my standard, it was terrible. So I'm going to try and structure it as much as possible. And I'm going to avoid doing what I did yesterday, which is... I try to convince you of something. In this video, I won't care about that. I don't give a fuck if my argument is sound or if it's going to be something that is going to touch you. I'm just going to say what I have on my heart and what I believe. And this is going to have one of two results. Either you are like me and you're not a Zoomer and therefore it might serve as catharsis or it's going to open your eyes to the situation and why Zoomers are widely hated by other generations. And also, if you are a Zoomer, it might give you some keys of comprehension because a ton of young people on my channel reach out and they try to gain some knowledge and insight into their own situation. For example, I have people ask me, hey, I'm addicted to this and that and I just can't face it. I don't understand what happened. A lot of my friends are addicted as well. What exactly is going on with us? Well, I think I know what is going on with Zoomers. They are the fruits of an environment. An environment that was created by the previous generations. It's also why I can't just sit there and make fun of them and call them idiots. Because I realize that most of the shortcomings that Zoomers suffer nowadays and most of their misery comes from me. It comes from people my age. All of these pathological thoughts, all of these idi idiotic ideas and problems started brewing within my generation and it started to come to fruition within Zoomers. In a sense, they inherited all of the negative traits that we also inherited from boomers, and it's getting worse and worse. So at some point, something must break. Either the cycle is going to break because we're going to be able to realize our shortcomings and we're going to fix ourselves, or we're going to get to a point where humanity as we know it is going to degrade to a point where further reproduction and evolution is going to be terrible, or impossible even. This is why I told you that I realized as I was speaking yesterday, this isn't going to be a fun video. So I'm not going to try and force the issue and make it fun. I'm just going to tell you exactly what I think. Now, the way I'm going to present this video is as follows, because even though this is a rant, I still want it to be structured because there is a main thesis. So there's going to be three main heads of the argument. And these three heads are what I call the three C's. In these three C's is to be found every single problem that Zoomers have to deal with nowadays. And they are, respectively, cope, cringe, and clout. So you can consider these sub-chapters of this entire video, which I'm going to try and contain within an hour. So let's get started. Let's start to discuss why Zoomers are the worst generation and why I believe them to be the doomed generation. The first C that I'm going to start with, the one that I find the most annoying, but also the one that truly gives the best insight into the psychology of Zoomers and Gen Z in general, is cringe. 
Now, if you know what cringe is, cringe is pretty much the witnessing of someone doing something which creates a sensation in your chest. And that sensation is usually unease, right? You feel uncomfortable because you witness something that you yourself wouldn't want to be caught doing. That's the essence of cringe. And it didn't start with Zoomers. Actually, cringe culture started with my generation. I remember being a kid and being with my family members and for the French people watching this, watching a, an emission, a, a TV a show called Video Gag. And Video Gag was pretty much vid videotapes, as the name entails, of people getting hurt or doing something ridiculous and everyone would laugh at them. And I vividly remember even back then not understanding why people laughed at it, but more importantly feeling uncomfortable because I realized there was something dangerous in this. Shame is an important part of society, okay? Pointing the finger at someone and saying, hey, whatever you're doing is not good for the group, so you must stop is good. And this is when shame comes in. Instead of beating the person up, you have an easier mean. You just point the finger and you try to make them feel bad about their actions. It's a tool, a civilizational tool that has always been used. And actually a civilization that keep, gets rid of shame and has a no shame culture, a no judgment culture, is an extremely toxic society. But the opposite extreme is also true. And this is when cringe culture comes into play. Cringe culture is pretty much an environment where every time someone puts themselves out there, is being daring or tries something new, takes a risk, they are being deemed cringe. And this is the ultimate weapon of conformism because by doing that, you utilize exactly what shame was created for. You force people to behave a certain way. And in that sense, you create a behavioral bubble where everyone has to behave that way or else they're going to be rejected by the group. The question is, what exactly happens if the types of behavior that are being deemed cringe are ones that in the past were associated with virtue? For example, again, taking a risk. Back in the days, no one would have said that taking a risk was cringe. It was just dangerous. But I don't see that with Zoomers. Zoomers have taken cringe and they turned it into something entirely different. My generation used it, again, to make fun of people or situations that were deemed socially unacceptable. But not Zoomers. With Zoomers, it's a weird mix of projection and schadenfreude. A German word that I think I pronounce horribly. The reason why it has become toxic under their reign is because they, for the most part, are going to call cringe something that they themselves wouldn't want to be caught doing. Not in the sense that they believe it to be shameful, but because they look at the risk aspect and they also look at the fact that you have to be outside of the group for the action to occur. This means one thing. If you look at Zoomers, one of their main traits is conformism, meaning that they are extremely prone to herd mentality. This is why I also wanted to make this video. It's because I had big hopes for Zoomers. Looking at them grow up, I thought that this was going to be the generation to liberate itself from that type of nonsense. But they did the exact opposite. So with cringe nowadays, when a Zoomer calls you cringe, it's because you're doing something that goes against the grain. You're doing something that goes against the group and the Zoomer doesn't like that. This is the schadenfreude aspect. Usually and originally the German term was coined to describe a feeling of elation and even pleasure that one would feel by witnessing someone get humiliated or someone get hurt. It's not what it's like nowadays, though, because that's not what cringe culture is. As I said, it morphed. Now it's someone did something that I or the group wouldn't do because it would make us step outside of the group. So we're going to call that cringe because it's weird. It's weird in the sense that it refuses to follow the trend and the earth. That is cringe. And actually, if you were to compound the use of cringe throughout the, the Internet, if you manage to do that, you would realize that it's always used in that fashion. This means something. It means that society as a whole is evolving. If I went back 50 years ago and I somehow managed to explain to someone what cringe is supposed to represent and I told them, okay, based on that definition, tell me something that is cringe. What exactly would they tell me? Maybe rubbing from your neighbor that is cringe or maybe, I don't know, abandoning your children that might be seen as cringe. Nowadays, it's not what Zoomers deem cringe. And this is a problem because it's a generational divide. What I think is cringe is not what they think is cringe. But this tells a lot about them and the way they function and their mentality. Now, they don't rejoice when someone gets humiliated. 
It's the exact opposite. They push humiliation on someone that has done nothing to feel humiliated in the first place. So they utilize it as a weapon of normalization. They try to unify the behavior of the individuals within the group by forcing them to step in line with the threat of being ostracized if they don't. And if you understand teenagers, you understand how powerful that weapon is because nothing scares a teenager more than abandonment and ostracization. Since when you're a teenager, it's the age where you're starting to claim your own identity and you're trying to spread your wings. You're separating yourself from your parents. You are anti-tradition and anti-conformity, but only for that group that you're trying to live. Because in truth, teenagers are some of the most conformist individuals because what they want deep down is being able to conform with a group and be accepted by the group. It's a normal human behavior. We are social creatures and not being able to have peers or a support system is a death sentence. So as you leave the support system of your parents, you have to replace it with something else. That is an essential part of the life of a teenager and of the, the life cycle of any adult. What happens when that cycle is transformed into a culture of sorts? What type of weapons will it produce? Well, it, would, it will produce cringe culture. Cringe culture is what happens when you allow teenagers to create normalization standards. They are going to come up with weapons that are going to push individuals into becoming more like the group. This is not a bad thing. Because it's always been the case. Bullying is that. Bullying is a group of boys, for example, who see another boy being, I don't know, too feminine or too sensitive and are going to beat the shit out of the boy until he finally conforms to the group. It's not always great, but for the most part, it comes from a good intention. Teenagers don't know what they're doing when they're doing that. The only thing they see is someone who is different that is not acceptable because it goes against the group. So we have to destroy that in that individual. The issue is that this is supposed to create strong individualities. Because there, is, there comes a time in the life cycle of an adult where that behavior itself is being shunned and you start to stand by yourself. So you emancipate yourself from the way too constrictive uh, uh, group think of the parent unity. Then you move on to a group of peers where you're much more of an equal. And that is, in a sense, a step towards the right direction, which is your liberation, where you can stand by yourself. With Zoomers, I don't see that anymore. It's like they got, they got rid of the last step and they stay at the group think level forever since the cringe that they cultivated, the cringe culture and weapon they cultivated, is one that, in truth, is used against individuals that are not part of the group, but most importantly towards individuals of the group itself. Since, understand that someone who says cringe, cringe, cringe is actually projecting. What are they projecting? They're projecting their own fear of identity and their own fear of risk. Since someone who points the finger at someone who did something daring and fell and say, oh, that's cringe. Or someone who is being different and say, oh, that's cringe. What does it say about the person who says that? Well, that they have developed a fear of these very things. And why do they have that fear? It's because it's what the group taught them. It's not a good thing to stand outside of the group. So anything that goes against the creation of the group is going to be deemed Cringe. That is the ultimate form of conformism. As I said, it's the paradox of teenagers. They are rebellious, but their rebellion is just another form that conformity takes. And that conformity is the death of the individual. Because if you can never break away from that mold, you can never actually free yourself and find yourself. Zoomers is the generation that have never found themselves. They are a generation that is defined almost entirely by a form of herd mentality and culture. You can define a Zoomer, and Zoomer mostly define themselves, by the media they consume, for example, or the music that they like, or by a mental illness that they share. All things that are just surface level. These are just slight personality traits. Even sometimes they're not even that. And yet, that is pretty much all that Zoomers have become. All of that because of, again, cringe culture and that extreme fear of rejection. Zoomers fear rejection from the group so much that they create a situation where they will never be able to emancipate themselves from it. And this leads to a culture, as I said, where everyone is afraid to try. It's a culture where trying itself is deemed as cringe. So, of course, the individuals within the group are not going to try because trying is seen as uncool. And this is something that was prepared within my generation. 
My generation was the try-hard generation. We inherited from boomers a form of work ethic that is much closer to intensive labor than the actual fulfillment of the human potential. And it destroyed my generation. Most people in my generation are burnouts, meaning that they followed that ethos, but they didn't understand why, and it just shattered them. And a ton of them turned into communists or whatever, because it's a natural reaction to being betrayed to that level. We were told that walking our ass off was going to provide happiness, and we were also told that the goal of life was the pursuit of happiness. But happiness for us was equated with either pleasure, or it was equated with work. You were supposed to define yourself by these two qualities and factors, and it led nowhere, because it was removed from spirituality. Zoomers came after us, and they saw that. And as a reaction, because the generation always shuns, shuns the value of the previous one, they turned into non-triads. Trying hard is seen as uncool. The cool thing to do if you're a Zoomer is never trying. So, they are, in a sense, creating an environment for themselves where the values that are starting to develop for the group will lead to mediocre individuals. And it is a type of mediocrity that, unlike my generation, is not even counterbalanced by conscience. What I mean by this is, I know guys my age who are fuck-ups, meaning that they don't have a wife, they don't have kids, they don't have a house, they don't have a job. They still with their mom in their 30s. These guys are fuck-ups, but they know it. They know it, meaning that there is that voice in their head that tells them, hey, you did something wrong, and they're being devoured by it. It doesn't mean that they're going to fix it, but they know. I don't see that with Zoomers, because I think that this voice was the voice of my generation. It doesn't exist in their heads. So not only do they live in this non pride culture, but they see also absolutely nothing wrong with that, because fear is keeping them in check. It's, again, that fear of trying. It's that fear of being caught engaging yourself. Right? You're not allowed to be serious. It's an anti seriosity culture, to the point that I've also noticed that Zoomers never like things. If you ask a Zoomer, hey, what's your favorite band or what's your favorite movie, they'll never tell you straight up. They'll always find a way to present their preferences and hobbies as ironical. So they only like things ironically. And this is a sign. It's actually not just a sign, it's a symptom. It's a symptom of a people that are so afraid of rejection that they don't want to present any type of weakness that would allow someone to point the finger and laugh. But the issue is that as long as you are a person with opinions and tastes, there's always going to be something to be made fun of. So how do you turn yourself into a human that is completely bulletproof and cannot be made fun of? Well, you remove all of the asperities, you remove all of the things that make you an individual, aka special or different, and you become flat. So in a sense, you repress your own identity. Being afraid of liking something for real is a form of repression, because liking something is your identity. It's part of it. Like you, As I said at the start, you really like music, that's part of your identity. Zoomers, if they do that, will reduce their identity to that portion in particular, and even then, they will never go as far as to say that it's for real. They'll always give themselves some space to back off and say, oh, well, it was just ironical. The ironical enjoyment of everything. The issue is that this transcends the realm of hobbies, and they start doing that with everything. And it's a problem because there is a very famous quote that goes, the first step into doing something unironically is to do it ironically. So you're going to have a bunch of people who are going to take choices in their life, things that are going to define them, themselves and their identity, ironically, so as to make sure they're not too involved and they're not actually trying, without realizing that these choices define themselves. And this is why I think that cringe culture is at its core, a paradoxical culture, because if you go down and you look at the core of the system that I just described to you, you will realize one thing. The real cringe is cringe itself. Nothing is more cringe than call calling someone cringe, because you express your own shortcomings, you express your own inability to be yourself and to actually stand for what you believe is right, to stand for what you actually truly like. But... Zoomers are so deep down the rabbit hole of irony that they don't understand that. Because irony and sarcasm uh, creates a risk. 
you start to look at reality through, uh, through a scope and a lens. And you spend so much time looking at it through that lens that you become incapable of seeing it for what it truly is. So that is the first C that I wanted to share with you. The second one is cope. And cope functions almost on the same level, meaning that it's also something that is used to force people to conform. It's an agent of conformity. If you're aware of what cope is, cope is pretty much a word. I would even go as far as say just a sound because it means nothing. That you're going to tell to someone if you catch them attempting something. At the start and from its emphasis, uh, from its, uh, its origin and genesis, cope comes from coping mechanism. A coping mechanism is something you're going to be doing if you're faced with a situation that makes you uncomfortable, it may be traumatic. You will find a way to navigate around it without shattering your own identity or anchoring even more trauma. So it's, in psychology, a positive thing. But Zoomers have turned it into a negative thing, just like cringe. Nowadays, when a Zoomer says that you're coping, essentially what he's trying to tell you is you are attempting to solve a situation, you are attempting to look at the bright side, and that is considered cope, since Zoomers are the post-nihilism generation. Boomers gave birth to nihilism because they started to embrace materialistic values, they gave, they gave away the spirituality, they hyper-focused on wealth, fame, etc. So they ignited the fire of nihilism. My generation inherited thy nihilism and we lived with it and it destroyed us altogether. We are a generation of people who are depressed. The generation that came afterwards was a generation that never knew anything but that. They were born and molded by nihilism to the point that my generation is the nihilistic generation in the sense that it's in our behavior. For Zoomers, it's worse. It's in their DNA. They are nihilistic by nature because they don't, I believe, possess the ability to find any intrinsic value or meaning to things in general. They are the post-meaning generation. And this is why cope is so prevalent within them. It's because for them, the second you try to find a way to see the bright side, by default, you must be lying. So you're coping because there is no bright side, because nothing matters. And the interesting part and the, the general gap has also created a form of nihilism that is almost cheery. Meaning that my people, the millennials, are depressed. So we have a form of dark and somber nihilism. Or we say nothing matters, frowny face. Zoomers say nothing matters, smiley face. And you could tell me, well, that's an evolution. It's good. It's a step in the right direction. No, it's terrible. Because they've started to accept that their life has no meaning. My generation was being devoured by the thought. It made us depressed. They don't care. Because to them, it's just an absolute truth. So, of course... Any attempt to try to see the positive in life is going to be deemed cope. And as I said, this is the absolutely strongest normative force that one can create because it pushes nihilistic values onto everything. Not only are you going to prevent people from doing things by using cringe and calling everyone who attempts things cringe, but more than that, you're going to remove their very incentive from doing that in the first place because... Before you even try that big jump or that big risk, I'm going to remove in your brain the very idea that there is a chance that this thing is going to resort to anything positive in the first place. And that ensures that nothing is being done. It's why Zoomers are the non-productive generation. My generation revolted against hyperproductivity because we perceived it as being a form of slavery. With Zoomers, it's not even that. It's just that they don't see the point. And this leads me to an, in, an interesting observation and something that people my age might remember. Of course, generations that are prior, the older generation, always judges the next one. But I think that in this, there is more hope than annoyance or there is more hope than just insult or offense. We look at the next generation because we know that these people are going to inherit the earth. So we have to pay close attention. And this is why I ended up making a video about Zoomers. It's because I've been paying close attention. And from the forums that I've visited in the past, I've noticed that people started to bet and gamble on what Zoomers were going to become. And there were two main outcomes I kept seeing. It's people who are saying that Zoomers were going to be su super Nazis and they were going to be like super right-wing and they are going to be like super based. 
This was mostly the, fan the fantasy of right-wing people are my age on the internet. On the flip side, you had the leftists who said, no, no, Zoomers are of course going to be the woke generation. They're going to be the generation to reject capitalism, to embrace Marxist values, etc., etc. And the two camps would bicker all the time. It's funny to see that they were both wrong because they didn't understand what our generation was going to create in the youngins. Because we, millennials, are the hyper-activist generation and we're super engaged in politics and in social problems in particular on both sides of the spectrum, the people that came after us saw that and thought, okay, that's lame, that's trying, that's, that's being involved. We don't actually care about that. So if you look at Zoomers nowadays, they're mostly apolitical because it's simply something that doesn't interest them. And the reason why I include myself in this entire right-wing, left-wing judging of Zoomers is because I had also my hopes for Zoomers. What I hoped was that they were going to separate themselves from politics. They were going to transcend the realm of politics and do away with the cleavage. And I was also wrong. Because at face value, you could think, okay, well, they don't care about politics anymore, so it's good. Well, they don't care in the sense that they don't really understand the importance of it. And therefore, they have just completely washed their hands of it. Because they see it as lame. But politics is still a very important part of the entire equation. But because... It is now an integral part of the, the generation and of the identity of Zoomers to not get themselves involved. Well, they will not get themselves involved even in things that they should. Which is why it's always funny to see people again a little bit older that thought that because Zoomers were raised watching fucking Harry Potter and the Hunger Games, they were going to supposedly revolt against the government and the establishment. That's wrong. That's the feelings of my generation projected onto Zoomers. The most probable scenario is that Zoomers will just be completely apathetic. They will simply not care. And you see that with the way they conduce themselves. Because COPE is that. COPE is simply not caring. And it's looking at people who do care and telling them that it doesn't matter that they care and that nothing is going to happen because nothing matters anyway. And this is why COPE and cringe are very similar. Because COPE is also a COPE. When you push away coping mechanisms, that is a coping mechanism that you've put in place to protect yourself from coping mechanisms. It's like people who hate self-improvement, which, by the way, for the most part, if you've noticed, are Zoomers. Why do they, have, they hate self-improvement? Because if you accept the importance of self-improvement, you also accept the idea that there was a problem in the first place. So now you have to face the problem. It's the same with coping mechanisms. Someone is trying to find a way to figure out how to face their demons and trauma. And you say, oh, you're coping. You are projecting your fear of your own problems and traumas. Because if you were to accept that the person is doing something good and positive, this must mean they're fighting something negative, which is the original trauma. So what is the solution? Well, just ignore it. Refuse to engage. Refuse to be productive. And ignore that trauma altogether. This is Gen Z in a nutshell. They just refuse to engage. And this is why they are devoured by mental illness. It is no surprise that they would be, because the only way to face a mental illness is to fight it. It's to accept it as something unacceptable. So it is to cope. It is to find a way to cope with the mental illness. But if you reject that very mechanism in the first place, what is going to happen? Well, these mental illnesses are going to get worse and worse and worse. And worse than that, they become normalized and accepted on a social level. Zoomers are the first generation to turn mental illnesses into something positive. My generation hates their mental illness. We are plagued with it. We don't know how to fix it. But we still know deep down that it's a bad thing to have. Zoomers don't. You can go on TikTok or Instagram right now and find pages with hundreds of thousands of people that are trying to relativize their mental illness and try to make it into a good thing. Which means what? That they're never going to actually face it. They will be stuck with it for the rest of their life. Does it mean that their mental illness is not destroying them from the inside? No. It's just as damaging for them as it is for us. But the way they have chosen to deal with it is nothing. They just say it's a good thing now. It would be the equivalent of cutting your own arm and just splitting blood everywhere, but instead of getting a band-aid saying, okay, well, it's not that bad. Actually, life with one arm is better than with two arms. 
But the issue is that the blood is still spurting. You're still going to die. Zoomers don't realize that. And even if they did realize it, I don't think they would care. Since the value that they associate with life is minimal. Since it is, in truth, a very defeatist generation. It's a generation that has given up before the fight has even started. It's a loser culture, per se. And you know, loser culture also indicates that there are losers within the generation. That has always been the case. I mean, there's a ton of losers in boomers, there's a ton of losers in my generation. But the difference, again, is the mindset. Guys I know, and I'm repeating myself, but it's important, who are losers know it. And they try to deem it or they try to mitigate that feeling that they have of unease by, by coping or they use drugs, etc. But at least they know what, that what they're doing is bad. Zoomers truly don't. And it's not because they, they lack the self-awareness. It's because they refuse to face the lessons and reality that the self-awareness gives them. The problem is that this is the reason why they are stuck in an endless state of arrested development. I told you that cringe, clout, all of these things. I said clout, it's a spoiler for the rest, but clean, cringe, cope. All of these were mechanisms that were seen at the start and then perverted. And the, the thing they do when they get perverted is that they, they get the individual stuck because you can't move past things. When you stop coping with your problems, while you're stuck with your problems, you can't evolve. When you refuse to try things because it's cringe, while you're stuck now because you're not getting anywhere, you're not taking an additional step. And this is the reason why Gen Z is the Peter Pan generation. There are man children in millennials, a ton of them, but the person is still relatively small. In Zoomers, I think it's going to be mostly the norm because they lack the tools and the psychological mechanisms to move past childhood. Because what constitutes childhood? Beyond biological markers, how could you explain to me in simple terms what being a child is and what being an adult is? If I were to tell you in five seconds, I would tell you this. An adult is someone with responsibility and a child has none. That is what differ differentiates a child from a man. If you look at cringe and cope and the way I just explained to you how these systems work, what do these things do in the first place? They remove personal responsibility. It is never your fault because you never even try. You can't have thoughts or responsibility or duties if you refuse to engage with them. So this means that it is impossible for them to become adults in the sense that we millennials became adults. They are going to define their own adulthood which for the most part is not going to be aligned with traditional values. And it's alarming because my generation, millennials, again, the, that we also call Gen Y, I think, is fucked. It's people who are, again, working in jobs that they hate, who don't know their place in the universe, who have no spirituality whatsoever, who are not having children, who are donating all of their love and maternal instinct onto cats and fucking plants. It's not, it's not going well. And then you look at the generation after us. I think it was very naive of us to think that Zoomers were going to do better. Because why would they? Generations have only gotten worse. And I think it's because there's something called a generational bubble and cycle. Within that cycle is the life of an empire. Within that cycle is the death of the civilization as we know it. Because the more it advances, the more it produces uh, people who are incapable of maintaining the cycle and at some point the bubble pops. So it's not necessarily that from the start of humanity, generations have become worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and Zoomers are here. It's that it's always done this. And these lows always mark the end of a time and the start of a new one. I don't know how close we are to this, but I think we're pretty close because Zoomers have and possess all of the characteristics of the end time. They seem to be, to me, the last people. And so the adults of tomorrow, because they have never actually become adults, will never actually be able to maintain a tomorrow. All of that because, of course, of the latent nihilism that boomers started, that we inherited, and that is now so refined in zoomers that it has fully bloomed. And you see that also with the rates of addiction. If you're a bit curious, go look it up, and you will come to realize, just like I did, that the number one demographic for addiction in the US and the West in particular is young people to very young people. 
it's not people my age. And that's flabbergasting because people my age are addicted. A ton of people smoke weed. They, they drink coffee all the time. They drink alcohol. They cannot live without pills. They do hard drugs. And yet we're being beat by these kids coming after us. And is it any wonder? They live in a drug culture, just like they live in a cringe culture. All things that were manufactured by us. It's why also I want to uh, mitigate my words and try not to appear too much as someone who is judging. I understand perfectly that what Zoomers have to face nowadays, the environment they have to face, is because of me. It's because of us millennials. We created that. We dumped these poor kids in that completely bleak environment and they turned into bleak individuals. Individuals that cope with their problems with drugs to the point that it's now also part of their DNA. My generation, again, knows that using drugs is bad. I don't think that Zoomers know that. Zoomers engage with drugs with a smile on their face, completely oblivious to consequences or even just completely uncaring. I don't think they care. And to connect to fitness, finally, because supposedly this is a fitness channel, you see that with sounds. Have you seen the liberty and liberality with which teenagers and Zoomers do sounds? It's like they're just popping candy in their mouth. And the worst part is that this translates to every drug. They have a cavalier approach to drugs that is almost fascinating because it's a form of kamikaze. My generation had a ton of tough guys who said, I don't care if I die young and I'll do steroids and I'll do hard drugs and fuck it, you only live once. But they never really meant it. Meaning that the second they heard they were going to die young, they stopped cold turkey and they go cry to mommy. Zoomers are not like this. I think that we face the first generation that will actually die much younger than the previous one and they won't actually give a fuck because they don't think that, we, that life has any value whatsoever since they ironize over it all the time. Just look at the type of drugs they produce, especially when it comes to PDUs. It's always a way for them to lessen the difficulties and consequences of PEDs or to just shrug them off. Just make a joke out of it, because if you can make a joke out of your own mortality, then facing your own mortality is not so bad. It's a normal defense mechanism. You know, laughing in the face of death, laughing when you're faced with an environment or a situation that makes you uncomfortable, that's healthy. But if it becomes your main mean of coping with the problem, and it's all you do and you always ironize, it stops being healthy because... When you constantly turn the world into a big joke, you stop having an ability to engage with it on a serious level. Zoomers are never serious because being serious is boring to them. It's not a mode of thought that they actually engage in. But it also means that when it comes to protecting their own life, they are absolutely incapable of doing so. They are the equivalent of toddlers playing on the highway. You can trust that a truck is going to come by and just completely pulverize them in a thousand pieces and the toddler will never see the truck coming. And this is why I think that Zoomers will be the generation that is going to be the most impacted by PEDUs. Also because, of course, they are being bombarded by that type of advertisement. And if you look at the form that Psalms, pre-workouts, all of these test boosters have molded themselves into, you also get to understand the sinister business of the companies that sell them. Because these companies have also understood that there is a strong Peter Pan syndrome in teenagers and Zoomers. It's always very flashy, bright marketing. It's always exploding words. It's always things that would in reality only attract the eye of a young child. And yet these are always a strike with Zoomers because, as I said, they are stuck in a state of arrested development. They are stuck in a state where drug culture is so prevalent nowadays that they have stopped understanding that there exists a life outside of it. Look at stimulants. Look at how prevalent stimulant addiction is in Zoomers to the point that I remember making my video about uh, stimulants and why coffee is bad for you and people in the comments saying, holy shit, I stopped all of these stimulants for two weeks and my headaches are gone. I'm not fatigued anymore. I stopped shaking. I thought these were normal things. I had kids tell me I thought, I thought these were normal symptoms of being a human because all of my friends have these symptoms, but it's because they're all addicted to caffeine. They have no way to look outside of the addiction because they have no reality to actually look at. And until they face what reality could be, the situation never actually improves. And this was mainly caused by, by social media. 
social media, I think, will be regarded in three or four hundred years as the key event that pushed human evolution towards its doom and towards its extinction because my people, me included, discovered these things when we were already reasonable enough and we had developed some level of intellect. And it still fucked us up. My generation, the, the men of my generation are addicted to porn, for example, even though we discovered it late in life, in our mid-teens. What do you think is going to happen to a generation that grew up with this shit, who had access to porn at the age of 8 or 9? They are never going to have healthy relationships with women. I think that this is a wrap. On this, if you think that people are not getting married and having kids now, just wait and see. The, the relationship between men and women is going to become impossible because they are both going to be so addicted to social media that it's going to pull them towards different directions. Women are going to suffer from it because of attention. Too many women are going to be fed attention to the point that their nervous system and brain is going to fry entirely and they're not going to be able to have a committed relationship with one man because that won't be enough attention to satiate them. So we will have what is known nowadays as an herbivorous generation. An, a generation that is going to stop breeding, that is not going to have kids. If you thought that the West was suffering from low demographics, you are in for rude awakening when you start seeing the numbers that the Zoomers are going to pull out. Their relationship with the opposite gender has been completely dashed and completely destroyed, and that is social media's fault. And this leads me to my last C. The last C is clout, and it completes uh, the trinity, the holy trinity of Zoomer pathology, because as I explain and, this, and, and try to uh, unveil for you the most important thing for teenagers and Zoomers is the ability to conform to a group. And they will put in place many mechanisms to one, convince themselves that this is the good choice and also to prevent people and themselves from, from leaving the group. But, and this is a conclusion I came to at some point by looking at humans throughout history, I think that at all points, human beings were looking for a savior, but not just a savior, also someone to worship. Worship is an integral part of the human existence and experience. And throughout history, this verifies itself. Humans have always worshipped something. Whatever form it takes, it's always something. If you take a look at who Zoomer, Zoomers worship, for the most part, it's social media influencers. They have turned their attention towards them. And the reason why I insist on the creation of the group is because the bigger the group is, the stronger the influence of the God, the more conformist the group is going to become. Gen Z is a generation that is, paradoxically, the one that worships the most. And it's, it's as I said, paradoxical because if we look at Western culture, we move the way from religion into a form of atheism. And you could think, okay, great. This means that we're going to liberate ourselves from dogmatism and we're going to stop worshipping false idols. But that's not what happened. If anything, there are more worshippers now than there have ever been in the entire history of mankind. Only difference is they don't worship gods anymore. They don't worship the god of Islam or the god of Christianity. Instead, they worship influences. The problem with that is that this sucks because at least to worship God, it's an infinite being with infinite knowledge that created the universe. Yeah, that guy is worth being worshipped. But what about the people nowadays on Twitch, on YouTube, on Instagram that have all of these Zoomers at their feet? Are they worth anything? It's insane to see that as someone who is only 10 years older, I can immediately pinpoint how much of a piece of shit some of these guys are. Some of these dudes that end up turning into gurus who are just able to say whatever and the fine boys follow it blindly. These guys are very dangerous because the power that they wield is completely unmatched with their intelligence. There is no balance there. If you have had the misfortune of looking at Twitch, for example, you will come to realize it. The most popular streamers all the ones who have the biggest audience of teenagers and Zoomers, and for the, for the most part, are the most idiotic. They are not leading these people anywhere good. This is why I think that the entire triple C thing is a perfect storm and cloud completes it. You now have a people highly conformist and group oriented who also worship fame to a level that has never been seen before. Meaning that for a Zoomer, 
a sign of credibility is going to be the fact that a person is widely followed. And this leads to extremism on the verge of fanatism because I've seen things on social media that send chills uh, up my spine. For example, a post about, I don't know, some chick that played in a movie like once or twice with millions of likes of Zoomers who are essentially just liking a random picture and saying things underneath like, oh, she's a goddess or I would die for her. I believe them because these are the new gods. They are the new gods of children. These are the people we have to count on when it comes to actually mentoring the youth. I think that it's a sign of the apocalypse. It's a sign that the end times are near. Since you could expect Zoomers to actually grow out of it, but they never truly do. That latent fanboyism is always present in their heart. They might move from a person to a person, but they never move on to themselves. They never emancipate themselves and create their own identity. They always manage to derivate their identity from someone else. And it's in par and aligned with the fact that they are the non-productive generation. Because of course, if you refuse to produce anything, it also means you refuse to produce your own identity. So you're going to get it from someone else, but you also refuse to produce your own ideas. So you're going to outsource your own ideas. And I see that on my channel all the time. Zoom is asking me, oh, what do you think about this? Or how do I do this? Why do you ask me? How about asking yourself? Why I think about this? Who gives a fuck? My opinion doesn't matter. Your opinion matters. How do you do this? I don't know. Have you tried trying anything instead of asking me first? Why do they do that? Well, it's because they have been molded into not being able to make decisions for themselves. And all of that is because they are obsessed with clout. They take information from sources that they perceive to be gods. And there is still something sort of positive in this because it's naivety. But it, even that fails to be benevolent because if Zoomers like one thing, it's first and foremost to tell you that they can't wait until you blow up. They can't wait until the channel explodes in size and you get popular. Why? I think it's because they're projecting their own inability to accomplish anything for themselves. They live vicariously through other people. So for them, if they follow a channel and it becomes big, it's all a bit their victory as well. So they feel good about it. It makes them feel better about themselves. But these same people will also very quickly turn on creators and say, oh, this guy fell down or this guy... This guy is not what he used to be. He is now an has-been or whatever. So they are obsessed with clout, both on the way up and on the way down. They have no loyalty altogether. They are like fleas. They jump from dog to dog and they only want to stay on the top dog, on the big dog. The rest, they will shun outright. This is a people that is devoid of any type of virtue. Every flow that they have is just 100% a flow. And it's observable, especially with the younger Zoomers, Although it's always been present. It's a trait that my generation didn't really have. I know it's, it's extremely, uh, uh, it's extremely, how do you say that? It's extremely convenient for me to say it. And every generation says that, oh, my generation was perfect. I'm not saying mine was perfect, but they didn't have these traits. They still had identities, shit identities, but identities. We never had the opportunity to just completely melt ourselves and our personalities into that of streamers. But that's what Zoomers have become able to do because of social media. It gives them the ability to stop thinking and just to follow the herd. And the people who urge them is just as stupid as them, if not more stupid. And so there is nothing to expect from them. And in reality, it is their absence of critical thinking skills that makes Zoomers so conformist. It's the serpent that bites its own tail. Conformism robbed them of critical thinking skills. And critical thinking skills makes them very apt at looking for a group because the safety of groupthink replaces the ability or duty to actually think for yourself. In truth, Gen Z has achieved a form of hive mind that has never been seen before in the history of humanity. It, they all share a brain, it seems. It's like a gigantic body with only one brain. And this means also that for the most part, they are all going to be inclined towards following the greater number because in the greater number is the greater type of conformity. And this leads us to a new phenomenon I've been observing recently. And that is the ratio meme. For those of you not aware, ratio is pretty much 
the crystallization of conformity when it takes the form of a quote-unquote joke that in truth is not a joke at all. So to explain to you by giving you an example, if two people have an argument and you are a normal human, you're going to listen to the two and you're going to use your own logic and reasoning skills to decide who is right and who is wrong based on your sensitivity and based on what you believe to be objective criteria. Zoomers don't function like this. Zoomers instead look at the person who has the most followers, who has the most clout, and based on that, they decide that this person won. Case in point, on Twitter, you see that all the time. Two people go back and forth. One of them is going to end up with a ton of retweets and likes because they have a big community. And in the comments, you will see people say, oh, ra ratio. You've been ratioed. What does it mean? It means that the other person has more clout and popularity than you, so you lost by default. And you could say, well, that's just a joke, NH. You're taking, you take everything seriously. You're right, it's a joke. But remember what I said. Doing something ironically is the first step to doing it unironically. At this point, some people are not non-ironic when they say ratio. They truly believe it. And it's tough to blame them because it's a very comfortable mean of existence when you can't just blindly follow the rest of the group. And this is what also leads me to believe that most of what I've described previously with cringe and cloud and cope is on the same line. Every single time, Zoomers are always going to side with numbers. So, in truth, that's the reason why I spoke about a hive mind, because this is a survival instinct. Throughout history, being on the side of the majority has always been a good thing, because it means you have a very high chance of survival because you're part of the group that has the highest number of participants. Zoomers are like this, but they don't even realize it. They don't realize that their entire identity is circling around that very concept. Because again, look at cringe. What is cringe? For the most part, Zoomers don't decide themselves what they find cringe. Instead, they let the group decide what is. It's the reason why you have cringe compilations. Cringe compilations cannot magically tap into the brain of every single human that watches them and pinpoint exactly what they think is shameful. It gives a standard for what is cringe. And it's what I said, that it's the strongest weapon of conformity. Now, you could tell me, okay, very nice, you diagnosed the psychological problems of Zoomers, but what exactly is the impact on the world? Because for now, we stood at the personal level, and maybe it impacts millions of people. But what does it mean for us, for the other generations, and for the future? Well, to understand that, we're going to have to look at algorithms. Jesus Christ, the way I just pronounced that. Algorithms. I know I'm an immigrant, but still. And the reason why I want to start breaching that topic is because, I don't know if you've noticed, but algorithms are an integral part of our world nowadays. It decides a ton of things. For example, the reason that you're watching this video right now is because the algorithm showed you the video. Even if you're subscribed, it's still the result of the algorithm. And this is because our evolution is now entirely linked with the internet. I remember being a kid and starting to be on a computer and my parents, the previous generation, was extremely excited because they perceived in the internet the ability of the newest generation, mine, to become smarter and more advanced because, of course, we were going to have all of the information in the world available to us and therefore this must have meant that we were going to become much smarter and better humans. But I think the exact opposite happened. Internet made people dumber because everything is available and therefore you don't have to put in as much work. It's why I don't blame Zoomers that much. When you've been born with social media and with, again, Google and all of these fantastic methods of research, you don't really have to think for yourself anymore. You can just let the engine think for you or you can let someone else think for you, an expert. And all of this, again, is my generation's fault. I think we went too far with this shit. We outsourced the ability to think to the point that now it's only logical that Zoomers would be like this. And I also blame Boomers. Boomers also started the entire fame thing where they started to worship celebrities. Now it's all the way down to Zoomers and they do it the worst and they are the worst fanboys. It's as if we have started to devolve and every single generation passes down their own flows to the next and it gets amplified and none of the positive traits actually get passed down, which also begs the question, 
what exactly is going to happen after zoomers? Well, we're going to touch on that at some point. But to go back on the algorithm, this is when I'm going to make a bridge to YouTube fitness because I don't know if you've noticed, but YouTube fitness has turned into shit. And I know exactly why. It's because of zoomers. Once again, it's those fucking zoomers fault. And I have a proof. It's not just a conspiracy theory, because if you observe an algorithm and I work with them, they're fairly easy to understand. It's like a mirror. An algorithm is a mirror of what people desire. The more people click on something, the more the algorithm is going to think, okay, this is what I need to promote to be able to get more clicks and visibility for the website for which I quote unquote work. And therefore it reinforces itself. It's a vicious circle. So what happens when you have a bunch of people, young people, who start to flood a platform like they did with YouTube? Because keep in mind that the biggest demographic on YouTube is Zoomers and young people. Well, whatever they like is going to become the most popular content because they're going to click on it at a very high rate, much higher than any other person or demographic. This creates a boomerang effect. The algorithm perceives that that type of content is very popular, therefore it promotes it more. And when it gets back to the audience or to the content creator, you observe that the people who make the content are going to adapt. It's why, for example, YouTube is becoming short-centric. More and more people make shorts and people cut down their videos to be as short and snippy as possible. Is it because they have decided that it's the best way to actually put information forward? No, it's because they've realized that this is what works, because this is, this is what young people are going to click on. So they make shorter and shorter content. And in return, this means that Zoomers are going to get more power within the algorithm because they click on even more videos now. And it's that non-stop back and forth that reinforces itself. And uh, if you want to understand why people have such low attention spans nowadays, it's because of that. Zoomers grew up as the ADHD generation with screens and with things that made it impossible for them to focus more than five minutes on something that is not constantly exploding in their face. They discover YouTube. They directly, of course, gravitate towards the type of content they can digest and actually, fo and actually follow, which is short content. More and more creators make short content and therefore their own attention span, attention span gets lowered and it shrinks even more. I actually have people, young people on the channel, who told me, hey, before I watched your content, I wasn't capable of watching a video for more than 20 minutes. My mind would wander somewhere else. And now that I force myself to sit down and listen to you for long periods of time, I've improved. And that is perfectly normal. It's because you're retraining your brain to be able to actually focus. But this is not what the rest of YouTube is doing because it's not the way to get popular. This example is important because it makes you realize one thing. We have given the keys of this world to the youth because algorithms, as I said, are systems that benefit the majority. And every single person that clicks on a video in reality casts a vote, a vote that reshapes the system. If you start to realize that our world, physical, not just the virtual, is also in a sense shaped by a form of algorithm, which is the demography and the way the generations evolve and the traits they develop, you come to understand how dangerous that is. You never want to give the keys to culture to the youth. Why? Because young people are stupid. If you give them the power, they are going to turn everything into an image of themselves. And this is why I believe that we are getting to the point where not only are Zoomers going to suffer and, uh, uh, tremendously from the, the, uh, the shortcomings that I've already exposed, but the world around them also will. And it's something that we're seeing more and more. Now, as I explained, this also is constantly contradicting the idea that the internet was supposed to make us better because there is no generation more gullible than Zoomers. Again, you could think, well, they grew up with the internet. They should be able to avoid every single scam on said internet. But take a good look at, for example, pre-workout or supplement companies. Who exactly do they target? They constantly target Zoomers. Why? It's the biggest demographic. And it's the most gullible demographic. And on top of that, they also have the most expendable income, which is paradoxical because a lot of them don't work or they have very low incomes. But what you don't take into account is that they have access to their parents' wealth. And no one is more liberal with money than someone who hasn't earned a penny of it. So they spend and they spend and they spend without actually looking at what they're getting. And so they're very easy to scam. They have become the old people of 2022. 
It used to be that scams were people who were going to call you on the phone and try to get your bank account information, and it only worked with old people. And now that type of online capitalism is doing the exact same thing with young people. Why? It's figured out their biggest flaws. Because what I'm presenting to you right now and all of the big, the three C's and all of these flaws, I'm not the only one who has noticed. It's very easy to notice. Psychologists have realized that a long ass time ago and companies hire psychologists to be able to run their marketing campaigns. So if we look at the way marketing is shaped nowadays, we come to understand the problem with Zoomers. It's just, you just have to observe viral marketing campaigns. How does marketing function nowadays? How will a company try to sell you a product? It used to be with boomers in my generation that to get people to buy a product, you need to tell them that the product was good, even if you had to lie, because it was the method that functioned the best. Nowadays, this is almost gone. You don't have to do that anymore because it's not super relevant for Zoomers. Instead, you have to tap into the fear of rejection and our love of conformity. So what do you do instead? Well, you make them believe, also, again, even if it is not true, that the product in question is beloved by the rest of the population and the rest of people their age. And just like that, you're going to get them to watch it. Case in point, if you have your eyes open, movies have started to do that a ton. Because viral marketing campaigns for movies usually target the youth and they are always run the same way. You'll see a ton of memes, a ton of jokes online that are going to say, oh, I cannot wait to see the movie or, oh, look at this funny thing we're going to go do when we go watch the movie. All of that is extremely, uh, extremely palatable for teenagers. It makes them want to consume that content and that cultural media. Even if they had no interest in the first place for said media, you saw that with the Minion movie. You see that nowadays with the Barbie movie. All of these things that you see are marketing campaigns. But at some point, as I've already explained in previous videos, the people targeted by the marketing start creating the marketing themselves. This is how vicious and how intelligent that practice is. And recently, you started to see an, a sort of counterculture on that because something that we can give for Zoomers, and I'll admit, is that their irony is very developed. And even though they don't necessarily perceive that this type of marketing campaigns is targeted towards them and they're being preyed upon, what they do perceive is the, the humor in it. So sometimes they flip it on its head. You saw that uh, recently with the Morbius movie, uh, which is a shit-ass movie, by the way, but the company in question, because their numbers were shit, try to flip the script and they ran a viral marketing campaign. And the issue is that it didn't work. It was immediately made fun of. And another example that's a little bit older is the Fast and Furious movie with the family meme. That also didn't work. So it's not something that actually always hits the center of the target. But it's still concerning because it does mean that capitalism has shifted. Our means of, consu of consuming media have shifted and the way companies try to get us to consume also has because now it's Zoomers that are running the world. They are the next generations. They are the ones that are going to spend the money. My money is already spent. I'm not going to spend that much more. Boomers, boomers are sitting on a pile of gold like dragons. They are never going to release a single penny. So Zoomers are going to be the target from now on and that is what we are seeing nowadays. If you are part of that generation, you have to keep an eye out for that type of practice. But this is why I insisted on the algorithm. The algorithm is shaped to push content to Zoomers to get them to consume. And this is why Zoomers are highly materialistic and, and, uh, and consume to a degree that far outdones any other demographic. You know, on the pyramid of people who have expendable income, you have women who don't have children, you have gay men, and at the top you have Zoomers, you have teenagers. And I've noticed one thing with companies and with capitalism in general, or corporate capitalism, whatever one you want to call it, the act and action of trying to get people to consume as much as possible to increase capital. What they do is, once they have their demographic where they want it, and all of the qualities of the demographic is directly aligned with their ability to consume, they want to freeze that. They want to, to freeze that in time to make sure that the demographic can still consume just as much. And this is why, with women, for example, the big thing that uh, the great capital is trying to attempt is, it's trying to get women to not have children, to keep them in a perpetual state of consumption, because... Women who don't have kids tend to consume more. You could say that it's because they're trying to fill a void. You could also just say that it's because they have expendable income that they should have been uh, spending on offsprings, but they don't have offsprings. So they spend it on dogs or they spend it on makeup or on stupid things they don't need. 
You see that with zoomers also. Zoomers are at the point where they're not exactly adults yet. And capital really doesn't want them to become adults because if they do, they're going to stop consuming as much. So it attempts to keep them in a state of arrested development. And just like I described previously, it's pretty much already done. Zoomers have entered what I call permanent adolescence. They don't want to grow past adolescence. And for them, it's because they perceive it to be associated with responsibility. But on the flip side, companies also realize that if you can keep someone at this base level of existence without any sense of duty, then you also make them into the perfect cash cow. And Zoomers have a tough time actually realizing that because when you are the target and you're being bombarded with that type of advertisement, it's ex extremely hard to actually break free from it. And this is sadly the problem with that generation. I think that they're like a test tube. They are the first generation that was exposed to algorithm to an extent that they've been entirely shaped by it and they didn't have a chance to shape themselves. And the result is what I've already explained. And the best way I can sum it all up and make you realize it is by recounting an experience I've had, one that actually gave me access to the soul of Zoomers. Because even though I don't actually carry them in my heart and I'm highly disappointed by Zoomers, I also understand that they, ne they never had a choice. They truly were shaped by the environment. And at some point, because of course, the wood and the environment is in truth an algorithm, they were given the chance to reshape that environment once they got power, but because they never knew any better, they just shaped it after their own image, so they have created their own hell. It is something that is going to be an endless recurring nightmare. And understand that there is a way out of it. And some Zoomers have figured it out. The way out is role models. To be able to understand what you're doing wrong, you need to look at someone who's doing right. But you can already count on the fact that this has been taken care of. If you take a good look, all role models have been completely dashed and destroyed. The only people remaining for Zoomers to follow are influencers or stupid celebrities. This, in my opinion, is on purpose. That way they never grow older because they follow adolescents. They follow people with shitty lifestyles based entirely on the pursuit of pleasure. Take one look, again, at Twitch streamers. Take one look at all of these big YouTubers that target Zoomers. They are essentially them, but a few years older. And once that guy ages and is not recognizable anymore and not young enough, he's replaced by someone younger. The system has an uncanny ability to produce celebrities that keep people in a state of arrested development. Very recently, I was shocked to see how many people were fanboying after these actors that play into superhero movies nowadays. I think there's Tom Holland and then Zendaya. Look at the statuses of these people on the internet. They are essentially God. But what purpose do these gods serve? Well, they keep the people that follow them in a state where they are not going to grow older. And if you prevent people, especially young men, from accessing, accessing role models that are going to give them a good idea of what is going to happen as you grow old and make you want to grow older, you are going to be perpetually stuck in youth culture. Youth culture that essentially then becomes the culture of the world because every single platform adapts to the largest demographic and Zoomers are the largest demographic. And since they have no identity whatsoever, they adopt the identity that is pushed upon them by the system and that identity is then the system. Now you understand why this video is not as funny as it was supposed to be. It's because the more I spoke about it, the more I realized that the entire thing was a trap from the get-go and it's now too late. It's a trap that my generation should have seen coming. Boomers are too stupid for that shit, but we inherited their nonsense. We should have perceived that it wasn't going to end good and well. And we didn't. And therefore, we left all our brothers with the shit they have to deal with nowadays where they are forced to look for role models in social media. There are no good virtuous role models on social media. So they end up following people that are their age, that have nothing to offer to them, no sound advice. And therefore, things like Gymshark, things like, again, streamers or Psalms culture becomes prevalent because no one is there to tell them that this is no good. Zoomers, Gen Z, is the result of a generation that grew up without role models and most importantly, without morals, period. They don't possess something to show them what is right or wrong. And this is a spit in the face or a spat in the face to all of the people who thought that morality was innate, like it's floating in the air and you're born with it. 
The proof is in the pudding, it's not the case. Look at again drug culture. If no one is there to tell you and to explain to you why drugs are bad, you're not going to innately know it. If anything, you're going to gravitate towards it because it feels good. Your primal instinct is going to tell you to do drugs. This is why morality was needed. This is why these standards were needed. Boomers did away with them. My generation was left completely fucked because of it. And our Zoomers are suffering the consequences even more because morality doesn't even mean anything to them. They don't know what it means. To them, it's old shit. It's try hard shit. And therefore, they are simply not interested and are simply not going to pay attention to that. And if you want to have a direct view into the soul and the mind of Zoomers and understand that everything they're going through is not making them happy, but in reality making them miserable, I think you just have to look at their memes. Zoomer humor is a trip because if you're not a Zoomer, you're not going to understand it. And at first you're going to think, well, this is stupid, just like I did. To make this video, I looked at Zoomer memes and I couldn't understand a single one of them and I never laughed once. If anything, it made me uncomfortable. It was, in a sense, a form of existential dread I was experiencing in front of said memes. And at first I thought, okay, it's because it's simply not funny. It's not me, it's not that I can't understand, it's that objectively it's not funny. And then I had an epiphany. And that epiphany is that I realized that Zoomer humor was never supposed to be funny in the first place. Because in truth, it is nothing but a cry for help. It's why I'm trying to I'm trying to expand some information and trying to find solutions here. If I thought that Zoomers were having a good time and actually happy with their lives, I shrug my shoulders and think, okay, well, so be it, I guess. You're not me, and I think you're going to hell in a handbasket, but it's not my problem. But that's not what I see. When I looked at Zoomer humor, I realized that it is the expression of a generation that is stuck in a post-sense wood. A wood that has no meaning anymore. And if it has no meaning, this also means that the lives of the individuals stuck within it also has no meaning. So you have a collective group of people who are in constant search for a soul. They're trying to find a reason for their existence, but they cannot find a single reason because the previous generations dashed them. And their humor is an expression of that. And it's interesting because it, mirror, it mirrors contemporary art. If you look at art and the way it evolved throughout the ages, at some point, and that's modernity that brought that upon, uh, upon the scene, art stopped representing reality. And art stopped having sense because artists thought, well, why should art have any sense? We should be able to create art for art. Art is sufficient. It, it is a self-sufficient form of creation. It doesn't need to mean anything for it to be good. And this is when our art became shit. It's when it turned to actual flaming garbage because it lost any sense. Zoomer humor is the same. Humor is the reflection of human souls. It's what I believe. If you look at someone and you try to understand why they laugh at certain jokes, it's going to give you a ton of information about who that person is. If an entire generation starts to develop memes that are not funny objectively and are meant to not be funny, what does it mean about them? It means that the way they perceive the world is entirely nihilistic since if nothing has meaning in the world and comedy quote-unquote art is supposed to copy life, then senseless art is now funny. This is the new funny. Not being funny is now funny. It's why if you look at all of these Zuma memes, you will see that for the most part, they are ugly, they are low effort, it's very pixelized, or they do things on purpose to make it look like they didn't try hard. Like for example, they'll write, it is time for me to take the the garbage out of the house. And they repeat the two times. Why? Because it's funny. I didn't take the time to correct the typo, guys. It's funny. It's not fucking funny, but it's funny to them because it's not. This is, as I said, the expression of Zoomer's soul because they don't find it funny, just like they don't find any sense in the word. And the only way they have to cope with this is to ironically look at it and try to laugh, try to laugh at the absurdity of their situation. Zoomers are the new absurdists. They're trying to find meaning in the absence of meaning. And this is why also I think that they're not entirely lost. They're still struggling. 
there is still something in them deep down that is understanding that their situation is not good. The problem is that the mechanisms they are trying to put in place to actually save themselves from that situation do nothing because they just reinforce their problem. So if I were to do a small recap before I end the video, if we look at the situation globally, here is a generation that refuses to try, that thinks that effort is cringe and being a tryout is lame. So they can never get themselves to actually accomplish anything. They also have a very unhealthy relationship with difficulty because every time they face one or they have a trauma that they have to actually confront, they find a way to avoid that by calling it cope. So this led them to have terrible mental illnesses and also a terrible relationship with drugs. Because if you tell yourself, okay, I have an issue, I'll solve it with drugs, and you refuse to face the fact that the drug that you take to solve the trauma, the, the trauma is a problem in itself, then you are going to have to face the consequences at some point that are going to be dire whether you actually believe in it or not. You have also their love for clout, the fact that they're obsessed with numbers and that they're always going to gravitate towards the highest number. So they're always going to be conformist. They're always going to go with the hood. And for them, the truth in reality is the voice of the highest number, meaning that if the majority of people say something, then it must be true. This is what they believe. And then you compound all of that with the algorithmic nature of the word, that means that the greatest number of people that have the most expendable time and income have the highest potential to reshape the word and create the next generation that is going to be born in this algorithm, you are faced with a dire realization. And that is that not only do Zoomers suffer, but they are for the most part creating their own suffering and reinforcing an environment and wood were in the future future generations are also very likely to suffer as well. And this leads me to my conclusion. Whether it is by mistake or not, I think that Gen Z is a generation that was bred for slavery because they have every single desirable trait to, co to concoct a group of people that are going to be non-respondent to authority in the sense that they don't respect it, but they will do nothing to face it if it ends up at some point going after their liberties. They are going to remain entirely despondent. As long as the system feeds them what they want and all of the mechanisms, the psychological me mechanisms I told you previously stay in place, they are going to be entirely obedient, which goes entirely with what I believe was going to happen. I thought that Gen Z was going to be the rebellious generation that was going to break free from the chains of morality. They did that, but they did that in a completely non-productive way. They replaced a shitty morality, yes, by an even worse type, and that is the absence of morality altogether, the absence of guidelines. In a sense, they fell for the freedom meme. Gen Z is the freest generation that has ever existed on the face of the earth, and paradoxically, they are also the most unchained, because they have failed to realize that freedom is to be found in restrictions. The problem is that Gen Z is too busy not caring about things to notice that. And this is a realization that doesn't necessarily rejoice me because these are the people that are going to inherit the earth. What can we expect for the next generations? Well, I think that what we can expect is pretty dire. Because if you look at the COVID generation, for example, these are people who grew up under an actual dictatorship of sorts, or they are being told exactly how to behave, and told also that if they don't behave exactly how the authority tells them to, they are going to be punished. These, these guidelines and these draconian rules have left a generation of children scared, afraid, and also, and this is the most important part, deeply obedient. An obedience they inherited directly from Zoomers. It's getting worse and worse and worse. What can we expect for the future? Well, I think that the future is looking bleak, yes, but there is a solution. And the solution is realizing the flows of each generation and trying to work on them. Millennials have their flows, and I will make a video about them at some point. Today, I outline all of the flows of Zoomers, and I know I have a ton of them on the channel. So if you are concerned and you are in that age group, and what I said resonated with you, Understand that what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to break you free from your irony. Your irony that is going to prevent you from looking at the problem objectively and tackle it. 
Do away with all of the things that shackle you. All of these addiction I described, your stimulant addiction, your video games addiction, all of these social media that are going to turn you into a zombie, all of these weird internet cultures that are going to feed you an identity that is non-deserved. All of that you must break free from if you want, paradoxically, to attain true freedom. Because if you want to be a positive impact and you yourself become a positive role model at some point, this is what's going to be needed. The next generation after yours is going to look up to you for two things. One, for the things that are going to reject and two, for the things that are going to adopt. So what image exactly are you going to give them? This is the question I want you to actually put in your head. You're not going to be a kid forever. You might stay an adolescent forever, but this is only an illusion you fabricated for yourself and that the system is trying to keep you into. Break free from that and finally become an adult. Emancipate yourself from all of these chains and become the person that you were always meant to be. Because I think that Zoomers have potential. I think that there is something in them that could actually ignite a revolution. But as long as they are being kept, again, under lock, this shit is never going to happen. As long as you remain a Zoomer, you're never going to get anywhere. So, every trait of your generation, do away with, and you should already start to be on the right path. I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.